Guillermo del Toro is not the great savior of Lovecraft. First off, his version of At the Mountains of Madness, which he has been talking about for the last 10 years or so and always feels the need to bring it back up again every few months, it will never get made. He wanted $200 million and an R rating to do the film and wouldn't have it any other way. Naturally, the studio said no. Whatever that movie would have been, it would not have been Lovecraft's At the Mountains of Madness. It can easily be told in a Discovery Channel documentary style which would match Lovecraft's pace and narrative for the specific story. You don't need $200 million to make it. And there's only two graphic scenes in the story that could be easily toned down. No need for an R rating. So if Del Toro had really wanted to make At the Mountains of Madness, he could have easily gotten it done. Second, have you seen his show Cabinet of Curiosities on Netflix? It was front-loaded with the first three stories being the best, and it went downhill from there. And as a small side note, you can tell when the writers and directors have been in the Hollywood bubble their whole lives and have never had a real job, because as good as the first story was, that ending... That's not how doors work. At all. Anyway, there are two official adaptions of Lovecraft stories in the cabinet. Dreams in the Witch House had really nothing to do with the original. It kept the character names in the house itself, but it was more like a prequel to Lovecraft's story. It was beautifully filmed. Anything Del Toro does always has the highest of production and set designs but would have been more at home in the Conjuring universe. The other story was Pikmin's model. I was so looking forward to this one, but it turned out so bad. The narrative they created was good, very well acted, because you're filling in a lot of time from what was originally a short story. But I was looking forward to Crispin Glover's role, and he delivered the worst Boston slash Iris accent, whatever the fuck it's supposed to be, that has ever been committed to film. It was like something a high school theater student would do. And for the love of Cthulhu, and all things dark and unholy, the actual ghoul is one of the most pathetic monster designs ever. I think Del Toro may have been punked. It might have been intentional. But it looks like the designer had no idea what a ghoul was, so they did a Google image search and they went with the images from the 80s Ghoulies movies franchise. Or even worse, it also bears a striking resemblance to Crazy Craving, the 90s honeycomb serial mascot. Now I know that Del Toro didn't direct or write the screenplays for these stories, but it's his show, and he definitely had approval power on the final cuts and the monster design. That ghoul is the single worst thing to ever appear in a Del Toro production. Third, no one has done a decent film adaption of The Shadow Over Innsmouth yet, and that would be one of the easiest of Lovecraft stories to translate to screen. So what does Del Toro do instead? He just takes the fish-fucking part of the story and somehow turns it into an Academy Award-winning film called The Shape of Water. I guess it's not bestiality if there's consent. Hashtag me too. And finally, if we look at Del Toro's career, there are a lot more promised big ideas than there are actual productions. So in conclusion, Guillermo Del Toro is a great director, but the guy doesn't really understand Lovecraft's works at all. He just makes monster movies. So until next time, be sure to subscribe for more horror, occult, and Lovecraft madness. Cthulhu Photography.